Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use multi-pass rendering and using Photoshop. Okay, if you download the project files and open up cylinder.c4d, you're going to see this scene set up. And I'm going to go to my multi-view so you can kind of take a look at, you know, what I got going on here. I have a bunch of different cameras or excuse me, I have, a, I have one camera and a few different lights. And if I zoom out a little bit, you can kind of see where things are, especially in the top view. So if I go to perspective view, you can see I have a camera here. I also have this projection tag, a uh, protection tag, excuse me. And you can see everything's kind of locked down just so I don't accidentally move this camera. So if I unview this camera, you can kind of see the lighting that I have set up. It's really basic, just a overhead light, um, a, a light on the side, and then a backlight. So if we go to our render settings, and what we want to do is we want to choose our output, uh, choose a good uh, size. You know, we can use a higher resolution if you want, or a higher size if you want. Um, and then if we go to our save, we can see where we're going to be saving it out as we're going to save as a PSD, but we're going to be going to multi-pass. So we're going to check multi-pass. We're also going to go to our effects. We're going to make sure we have ambient occlusion. And so when we go to our save, we want to make sure we have our multi-pass checked. We can uncheck our regular save. Make sure we have multi-layer file checked. And we're going to make sure that we save this. And let's go to our multi-pass, our anti-aliasing. And then we'll go to make sure we'll have this set at best. So it looks the best way possible. And we'll just use like one to one and max level two to two. Now, if we go to multi-pass and we can go to our add image layers and let me pull this out a little bit. And we have a bunch of stuff in here that we probably won't use, but that's okay for this demonstration purposes. I'm just gonna keep everything, just keep it very simple for you. So we have the multi-pass, we have ambient occlusion just double checking everything and we have our save and so we just want to make sure we have our save file. So we're going to render this and then we're going to open this up into Photoshop. So I have the Photoshop document open up in Photoshop and you can see that we have a bunch of layers here. Now a lot of them may not affect your scene. So if you go through each one you can kind of see what effects here, we have our reflection, our ambient occlusion, which kind of gives us our really nice shadows that we have in like the little corners and crevices. Our global illumination, which we didn't have turned on, so we don't have to worry about that, but that's available. Caustics, anything light that's bouncing around within your object, so we don't have that. And then we have our ambient here, shadow, and specular what really didn't come up either. Now we have our diffuse down here. What I like to do is I like to um, duplicate this, this layer. So I usually just kind of double click on that, option double click, and then just option click and drag, just so we have a copy of that. Now we have this background layer, or excuse me, we have this background that it's kind of part of our image. So what we can do is we can select the black area and you can kind of see that we have a little bit of an issue with this object. And when you select the background, it kind of selects a little part of our, of our object. Now there's a couple ways we can get around this. One way is if I deselect 
and I go to my levels, Command L, we can kind of punch up this We, we can really punch up this lightness so there's a more of a contrast between this object and the background. So when I select on it, you still pick up a little bit of it and we can kind of adjust that as we go. And select just the border of our object. We can then go to our select and then go to modify, expand, and we'll go to one. We can delete. And now if we go to our object that we saved, we can go to delete again. Oh, excuse me, I'm on the wrong layer. And also, let me just make another copy, just so we have it. And so I delete. Now we have that deleted from the background. Now we can put in any background that we want into our object. So let's say I go to our gradient, and I go to, say, a new layer. Make sure we're underneath our object layer. And we can put in any type of gradient that we want. I just have this gradient here, but you can choose whatever you want. You can put it in any direction that you would like. So now at this point, what's really nice about having this kind of set up is that we can then select our object by a command click on the thumbnail in our layer. And now we can add in another layer, choose a different color, say like, oh, I don't know, let's go to something a little bit more bluish. We can command, uh, excuse me, we can option click within our and choose our foreground color into our layer. And now we can choose something like one of our blend modes in order to give it a different look. So let's go with multiply. We can usually go multiply or overlay. Let me deselect this selection. And we can bring that down if we want to drop the opacity a little bit. So this is a great way. Multipassing is, is a great way in Cinema 4D and Photoshop in order to get some uh, different looks that you might want. Say your client wants a different color uh, and you want to kind of take a look at it real quick. You can uh, sh you know get this going very quickly or an art director wants a different look to it and kind of take a look at your concepts. Or if you're just really just kind of making something for yourself and you're still kind of undecided on colors, you can go through this process. And let me turn on some of these, uh, some of these layers. Now I know caustics didn't work, ambient occlusion, and we have our reflections. So what we can then do is we can adjust each one of these. Say we're on our shadow, maybe our shadow, we want to punch up a little bit more. We want to bring that down. We can do that. We can use our opacity. So we have different ways of adjusting everything within Photoshop which is really nice because you don't want to go back and forth between your render, depending on how complex, how large of a document it is. So this kind of gives you the ability to um, change your concept up a little bit, change some colors. You can also add in, you know, maybe some brush, mo uh, brush marks. If you go to your, your brush tool, what you can then do is go into some of your brushes that you may have. You can download a bunch on the internet, or you can use some of these, some of these brushes that are already in. Let me click on this, make sure I get this down to a more appropriate size. And what we can then do is go into our uh, top layer. So let's click on a new layer. 
And now if I add in some textures into our object, I can then go to say another one of our blend modes, or I can just drop down the opacity. So it kind of gives us a way of adding some texture to our object without having to go through the UV process, without having to go through uh, body paint or another texturing program like Substance Painter. It allows us to give us some quick concepts within Photoshop just to get an idea of what we might want, might want to use. Or sort of after you got everything else done with the UV process, say you do all that, you do all the texturing, and then you bring it in for some final touch up within Photoshop, you can do that as well. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomicskills.com to download the project files from this tutorial, as well as all the tutorials that I've made so far. I also created a Create a Creature Head in Cinema 4D on Udemy. You can also take a look at all the other courses that I've made on Udemy as well. Thanks for watching.